Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, we are gonna be checking out the entire launch collection from Pezzle Puzzles. Uh, Pezzle was very generous and actually sent me the entire collection to try out. So I'm super excited to get stuck into them and see what they're like. Um, Pezzle's also a US based brand and they're very new. Uh, so they only started posting on Instagram towards the end of last year from what I could tell. And the collection only came out last month. So yeah, really, really new to the puzzle scene. Um, so let's go through all these um, and yeah, have a look at each one. And then I'm going to pick a couple to do. And then of course unbox and look at the pieces and of course put them together and give you my thoughts on them. So there's six puzzles in total in the collection that we've got two 500 pieces and the rest are 1000. Um, also something interesting that I found out from the owner of Pezzle, um, she told me that the photographer of I think all of the puzzles is actually uh, based right here in Sydney, Australia. Her name's Tori Ansley and yeah, her work is just really fun and cool. So I'll make sure to link her down below as well. Um, so let's go through these. So the first one uh, is called Pie in the Sky and basically uh, just features this, it's a 500 piece one and it's just got this lovely sort of, looks like someone's very fancy wall um, of all these gold frames and each one's got uh, pizza slices in it. So yeah, it's really like quirky and fun. So that, yeah, that's something uh, I should mention about the whole collection. All of them have a really like, I mean, obviously they're very bright and colorful and fun, but they all have a very kind of quirky, uh, whimsical and quite kitsch kind of imagery. And even the names sort of represent that as well. So yeah, they're all like really quite bizarre, but like in a really fun, uh, quirky, cool way. Yeah, so this one's definitely one for the pizza lovers out there. And then the next 500 piece one is really cute. This is probably one of my favorites. This is called Cool as a Cucumber. And basically it's these two cucumbers having a chilled, relaxing time in their like margarita bath or pool, I should say. Um, so they've got this, you know, one's got a pair of sunglasses on, another one's relaxing, listening to music with headphones. They're, both like sitting in little floaties. Yeah, it's really cute. <laughs> and it, I love the pastel colors of this one as well. So yeah, this is definitely one that caught my eye. Um, yeah, yeah, so very fun. And then this one is a 1000 piece one. And I'd say this is for the coffee lovers out there. It's called Nectar of the Gods. And it's a very fun um, sort of, they've gone for a bit of a kind of Grecian, like, I don't know, is it neoclassical kind of look with these columns and this sort of like, uh, like, well, I guess white marble statue. And it's all very like meant to be very heavenly because it's got these clouds and blue sky and beautiful flowers. And then it's got these cups of coffee beans. So, yeah, I think that that's definitely one for anyone who's really into coffee. So, but yeah, very kitsch and just very, really fun and quirky. So. That one looks like good fun. And then this one, which is also, I mean, they're all my favorites, but I guess if I have to choose, this is also one that I really quite like. Uh, this one's called Ball is in Your Court. And it's sort of basically like the, like a school, I think more like a US school dance or prom aftermath. <laughs> um, so I guess it's called the Balls in Your Court because what I think a lot of the school dances in the US and probably even here actually take place in like the school gym or like basketball court, indoor basketball court or something like that. So yeah, it's basically got the like disco ball on the floor and all these like cups and balloons and Polaroid photos. And yeah, it just looks like, you know, everyone had a really great time and yeah, just, yeah, this is just the aftermath of it. But yeah, I, this is one of my favorites probably because of just, I love the color scheme, like the color palette. I love these sort of pinks and teals and yeah it's really fun and just a, it's kind of really pretty actually so yeah i like that one and then the next one is quite amusing um this is called sugar daddy and um 
it's basically a sort of I guess a scene of what looks like a maybe shirtless possibly even wearing less clothes I don't know he's just in an apron uh, you know surrounded by baked sweets baked goods and making some sort of like some other sweets and then yeah so just you know in the kitchen making lots of desserts and sweets and sugary things and then it even says the word daddy in sugar on the the uh, red checkered tablecloth so yeah it's like quite uh interesting this one um a bit cheeky but yeah it's also like a really visually pleasing image like i love all the like the sort of interesting colors um in this and all the sweets look really nice and the cake looks amazing um, yeah, I guess that's something to note as well, actually. the All the images have a bit of a sort of vintage um, feel to them. Like, especially this one, it makes me almost think of, like, something from the 50s or even 70s or something. There's something about the the way the colours are presented that looks a little bit kind of retro or vintage. But, yeah, I really like it. It's very cool. And then the last one, which is also, like, very quirky and fun... This one's called Roll the Dice and it's basically like sort of like a scene in a I guess like a sushi restaurant or something because it's got you know people's people are like eating sushi and there's like a little sushi train and but everything looks a bit like it's almost a kid's playground like the sushi train is like like a kid's train track or something and but then the other weird thing is it's got a, well, like the name suggests, there's dice in it. So there's like all these dice in like picture frames on the wall. And then some of the sushi is actually, instead of rice, it's dice. And yeah, it's all a bit, there's like, yeah, lots of dice everywhere and other weird things. So yeah, it's all a bit strange and unusual, but, but also very fun and interesting. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's the entire collection. Um, yeah, really fun and colorful and uh, yeah, just I love the imagery. That was definitely what caught my eye on Instagram. I just like thought the images were just so like cool and fun and like just quirky. So they really like really eye catching. Um, so in a sec, I am going to pick one out. So I'm, what I'm thinking is doing a maybe 1000 piece one first and then following up by doing a 500 piece one just to see if there's like any differences and yeah and also because they're fun and I want to do a couple of them um, so yeah in a sec I will pick one of the 1000 piece ones and then we'll yeah unbox it and look at the pieces and put it together so the first puzzle I've decided to do is the 1000 piece ballers in your court puzzle and like I said I just think it's really pretty and I love the color palette um, yeah lots of very nice uh, details and colors and shiny things going on. So it just looks like a good fun puzzle to do. Um, so let's look at the packaging and unbox it. Um, so the first thing I notice is actually the feel of the box. It has that very nice soft touch uh, silicon feel. So if you just watched my Art and Fable uh, puzzle video, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's that, I guess, velvet touch kind of feel. So yeah, very, uh, Lux feeling love it um, you know that makes me feel excited about what could be on the inside of this box um, and yeah and the box is just a nice square sturdy box it's kind of chunky but yeah it looks looks nice and then as you probably saw before obviously if you have the whole collection or some of them they just look really fun and colorful and very pretty sort of and very aesthetically pleasing stacked together so if, even if you had them like on a shelf I think they'd look really cool so the front of the box has, I believe, what is the whole, like the entire image, so portrait image. And then there's the name of the puzzle and the Pezzel logo, and it says 1000 piece puzzle. And then um, this side, again, pretty much has the same info, name of the puzzle, little logo, and 1000 pieces. This just has the Pezzel logo on it. Uh, this is the same as the other side. And then I guess the boring side with the barcode and uh, you know, choking hazard info. And it still has the name of the puzzle. And then um, it says the completed puzzle is approximately 20 by 28 inches. So I'll pop the equivalent in centimeters on the screen. Um, it says designed in San Francisco and manufactured in China. And then the back is 
uh, pretty like simple. Uh, actually, the whole thing has got a bit of a minimal feel to it, which I quite like. It's very nicely designed. So the back again has the whole image and it just has a little bit of text here that says, uh, we are on a mission to create puzzles with personality that inspire joy, laughs, and all the good feels. So yeah, just a cute little kind of uh, blurb or slogan. And then just has like their um, like handle uh, at Pezzle Puzzles and their website as well. And then underneath it has photography by Tori Ansley. So that's the Sydney based photographer I was talking about and their logo. Um, yeah, so very like, yeah, very nice packaging. Um, so let's open this up. Okay, so inside is just plain white, um, not kind of that cardboardy. It's almost like a paper covering, I guess. And then, ooh, okay, so we've got here, oh, that's really cool. Okay, so we've got a reference poster, which is just like a paper poster. Um, and it's, well, it's kind of a nice size, but the exciting thing is it also has that soft touch silicon feel to it. So just like the box. So I'm like, that's really cool. I haven't seen that done like, like I guess printed on paper, like that's really neat. Um, but anyway, I quite like this size. It's not too cumbersome and it's like, but still bigger than the image on the front of the box. So yeah, I feel like it's a sort of very convenient size, you know, folds up nicely into the box, but like if you have it in front of you, it's like not massive. So yeah, I think that's cool. Um, but yeah, really like that. It, I, I just think it's like so extra that they've made this like have that silicon feel as well. It's like kind of so unnecessary, but I love it anyway. So yeah, I really like that. I think that's really cool. And then looks like we've got a lovely fabric zipper bag here with the logo on. So yeah, that's cool and nice. Like finally a nice fabric reusable bag. Just like, you know, I feel like all my dreams have been answered. Silicon, you know, soft touch, fabric zipper bag. So uh, let's, I guess, empty out the pieces. Oh yeah, and so the box is just empty again with that white sort of paper feel. And then um, looks like it's just a pale pink. Uh, yeah, it's just blank around the other sides. So let's open this up. Ooh, exciting. Yeah, the bag's really nice. It's like a very um, thick, I guess, white kind of canvas ma material. So yeah, very like, feels pretty strong. And um, you probably won't be able to see this, so you'll just have to take my word for it. But the inside of the bag, oh, still has a puzzle piece. Um, has a little bit of puzzle dust, but not very much. So yeah, that's kind of like good to see that there isn't too much dust in there. So yeah. And I guess I didn't need my scissors, so that's good. Um, although I did need them earlier because actually all of the puzzles did come shrink wrapped, but I took that off just so we could avoid some glare and stuff. Um, so the pieces look very nice. Um, so I guess the first thing I notice, or two things I notice is one, they also have that lovely soft touch silicon uh, feel to them. So yeah, just like, oop, just like, you know, Art and Fable or Water and Wines puzzles, they feel the same on top. Um, but that, that's sort of where the similarities kind of end because the back of all the pieces have like a uh, white paper backing. So not my absolute favorite backing. I usually prefer a plain cardboard um, just because I've had experiences where like sometimes the paper kind of comes off or can get damaged. Um, like actually this piece here has, uh, it's not exactly damaged, but it's like a little bit, uh, the paper looks a little bit bent or something, but it's actually still all attached. Whereas the piece on top looks absolutely fine. Like the, there's nothing wrong with the piece, but yeah, maybe just how um, the cutting process or something, maybe bend some of the paper or something, but it still feels pretty smooth. So. Yeah, so anyway, um, yeah, pieces have white uh, paper on the back. And then in terms of thickness, they're actually quite fairly thick, like um, medium to chunky thickness, I guess, if we want to put a scale. Um, yeah, and this one here, it feels pretty strong, 
pretty sturdy. Um, I'm sure if I like really tried, I could bend it. I think that's the case with pretty much every uh, puzzle piece though. But yeah, it feels, yeah, it feels good to the touch. It feels strong, doesn't feel like it's gonna get damaged too easily, I don't think, except maybe the paper. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, I guess the layers in between are also like a cardboard, so. But yeah, it look, looks good. Um, and yeah, and then like I said, the top is the beautiful uh, soft touch silicon feel. And um, just like some of the those other puzzles with the same sort of piece finish, yeah, it's zero glare, like it's completely matte. So if I move it around, I'm not getting any sheen or glare at all. So yeah, I really like that. I think that's really cool. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really excited to like puzzle with these. I think it's gonna be interesting. Um, so uh, the other thing, I feel like I'm forgetting to mention a lot of important things today. So um, the pieces also look very like crisp and vibrant. So they like seem to match what's on the box, which is good. Like I can see all the details very clearly. Nothing looks pixelated or anything. It looks, yeah, looks crisp and very like, colors look very nice and bright. Um, yeah, so what I forgot to mention before is the piece shape as well. So yeah, what we've got here is just a very, uh, I guess, traditional cut. So we've got, uh, we've also got a few pieces that are sticking together, but that's okay, that happens, they get wedged together. So we've got here, you know, like your three point or three tab um, pieces. We've got, a two tab one. Uh, what else have we got? Obviously edge pieces. Uh, another two, like a different two tab one. And if we have like a four tab or a zero inverted one, probably. Um, huh. Oh yeah, we've got a four tab one. Yeah, basically it looks like there's, you know, there's sort of usual, um, oh yep, and here's like a zero one so yeah it kind of looks like there's a bit of everything uh, one tab yeah so very traditional cut but there seems like there's a good variety of piece shapes and cut in here so hopefully that means we won't have too many false fits or anything like that and hopefully they'll fit together nicely um yeah so i think this should be pretty fun to puzzle with so yeah how instead of chatting i think we should get into puzzling this. Um, so like usual, um, I'll try and sort of get to roughly halfway and then I'll stop and sort of give you my midway thoughts. And then, you know, eventually we'll get to final thoughts of this and then we can move on to doing the 500 piece one.
I'm back and I'm pretty sure I'm about halfway through the puzzle, give or take. And so far I've been having a really great time with it. I really love how the image is coming together. I think like the disco ball it looks super pretty. Yeah, I really love the colors and I've just been having fun putting all the little bits of the image together. And I've been enjoying the like sort of quality and the experience overall a lot as well. And so far to get to this point, including sorting, it's been pretty quick. It's only taken two hours and 45 minutes. So yeah, I feel like that's very quick. Um, I think it's just the nature of this puzzle. It has like a lot of very like distinct sort of sections that go together pretty quick. Um, yeah, and it's been pretty easy to put together. I think the trickiest part so far was this sort of white and beigey balloons. Um, and even that like it's completely doable, um, just took a little longer than some of the other sections. But yeah, it's been pretty straightforward. Um, and then in terms of uh, quality, uh, yeah, I mean, of course I love the surface, like this sort of soft touch is just really nice and very, it's very addictive to, you know, makes you want to touch it all the time. Um, but the other thing apart from it feeling really good is it's completely matte. So there's been like zero glare and that's just, I don't know, I just really appreciate that. Um, it just makes like any puzzling experience so much easier and like smooth sailing. So yeah, I kind of almost wish all puzzles had like such a nice matte zero glare finish. Like it's just really, it's nice and it's kind of luxurious, like especially, yeah, especially the feel. Um, and then in terms of fit, the fit's been pretty good. Um, yeah, it's very like a very fairly comfortable fit, probably more on the snug side. But that being said, I've still been able to undo pieces quite easily without like any, you know, it being too difficult. Like, I don't know, let's see, I think. Yeah, so things still come apart really easily because um, I do, it is a bit of a pet peeve of mine when puzzle pieces are like too tight and then it's so difficult to undo them later and you end up damaging them and stuff. So this is still a pretty comfortable fit. Um, and the only reason why I say it's more on the snug side is because the pieces seem to hold together really well. So like you can pick up pretty large sections um, and like they don't fall apart. And that was really handy with doing the border. I could like do it in front of me and then move a whole row and just like carry it over there and it didn't like fall apart or anything. So yeah, really pleased with that. Um, again, that's just another really nice feature that just makes the puzzling experience so much more enjoyable and easy. Um, and then what else? Uh, there were, oh, with fit though, there was, I think like sort of one false fit or a couple of misplaced pieces. Um, yeah, there was one time where I think I had this piece that was like, had a bit of blue and I confused it with one over here. They look really similar. Um, so it took me a little while to realize it was actually in the wrong spot when I figured out that nothing else sort of connected around it. Um, but it only happened like once, so I'm not really bothered by that. Um, and then, yeah, in terms of puzzle dust, it's fairly non-existent. I can see a few little specks and of course my hands felt a little bit dusty after my puzzling session. Um, but really the board is like very clean and I wasn't sneezing at all. So yeah, really happy with that too. I just feel like uh, so far, like there's been a lot of really nice things about this puzzle. Um, there has been one con though. Uh, there's definitely been a bit of minor damage to like a handful of the pieces. Um, when I say minor damage, what I'm talking about is just things like bent tabs or corners or sometimes like uh, part of the piece, like usually the tab or corner being a bit splayed, like where the layers of the cardboard are a little bit split or puffy, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's, I've noticed that. Um, but that being said, like it doesn't seem to have affected like the surface of the pieces much like I and the way the image looks it still looks completely fine so yeah like it's not bothering me too much you tend to notice it more when you run your hand over the image so like let's see if I can oh like you can sort of feel oh like there like there's a tab here that's a little bit I guess sticking up a bit so I tend to like and, and that one is uh, maybe yeah uh, maybe I don't know yeah, like you can um, definitely feel like when the tabs are like sticking up or when something's like bent up a little bit because you'll like feel it when you run your hand over. Um, but like in terms of just looking at it, I don't really notice it that much. So yeah, I mean, obviously it would be lovely to have a pristine, perfect puzzle, but I think that's just not that realistic. And 
yeah you know unfortunately a lot of puzzles do end up with like damaged pieces it doesn't really matter what the brand is or how well made they are that just tends to happen unfortunately but um, yeah some more than others um, so yeah I don't know if these like got damaged just like in the box or if it was like part of the manufacturing where they got a little bit bent yeah I'm not too sure but um, you know I guess just something to note and keep an eye out for and also I guess just you know another reason to treat your puzzles well and you know look after them so they last a long time anyway um, so one thing I realized I didn't talk about uh, before starting the puzzle was my sort of puzzling strategy um, basically I just decided to start with the border since there's just enough detail um, and that seemed to work pretty well and I also pulled out uh, red and also these sort of like little glass pieces of the disco ball and yeah uh, that seemed to work well like the red section went together pretty easily and even the disco ball I thought it was gonna be really tricky but it was pretty easy actually so yeah and I love how it looks um, and then I decided to do the white and beige and that was a bit more tricky um, yeah so that's pretty much just been my strategy pull out distinct patterns or colors and work on them bit at a time and I think I'm just going to keep doing that going forward so you know there's like a couple of like a bit of a green balloon there and over here so I'll probably try and do that and then maybe even like do this balloon and maybe even fill in the pink background um, I'm kind of a bit apprehensive about this sort of tinsel glittery curtain in the background I think that could be a bit tricky to do so I think uh, that might get left till last um, but that's okay um, yeah so I think it's just going to be a fairly intuitive process to finish it off just pick out bits that you know that I want to work on next and place them yeah so the plan going forward is just to try and finish this off and then we will come back and just have like a chat of you know final thoughts about this particular puzzle and my how I felt about it and then we'll move on to doing a 500 piece one
I'm back and I finished this super cool puzzle. I had such fun doing it and I just think it's turned out to be really pretty. Like I really love sort of pinks and teals and purples. I think it looks super cool. Um, and yeah, I just had a really fun and enjoyable puzzling experience as a whole doing this one. Um, so all up from sorting to endpoint, it took just under five and a half hours. So I think that's pretty quick for a 1000 piece puzzle. Um, I feel like this puzzle image was pretty like more on the easy side to put together. So that definitely had like some tricky bits like this green tinsel, which I did leave to last. Definitely was probably the trickiest part of the puzzle along with like the sort of white stripes and the white-ish balloons. Um, but by no means were they extraordinarily difficult. They were very doable. They just took a little bit longer and a bit more focus than some of the other parts. Um, but yeah, so yeah, pretty quick to do. Sort of feel like it's a pretty fun puzzle for like different age groups and different sort of puzzle skill levels. So I feel like anyone could really kind of have fun doing this. Um, and then in terms of quality, pretty much like I said in our little halfway point chat, I kind of agree with all the same things I said there where, yep, love the, um, this like soft touch silicon surface and how matte and glare free it is. Like that just made puzzling so easy and just really enjoyable. Um, I love the piece fit. Uh, in that second session of puzzling, I don't think I had any more like misplaced pieces or false fits. It was very smooth sailing and everything fit together really nicely. So yeah, really, really like the fit. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'd say you could very easily do a puzzle pickup with this. So yeah, you know, if you love doing those, this is a great puzzle for it. And yeah, and then uh, puzzle dust. Yep, no, no more puzzle dust. Um, it's my puzzle board is virtually spotless. I think there was a tiny bit in the box and of course a little bit on my hands, but yeah, overall very, very, very minimal dust. So very happy with that. And then I think, yeah, like the biggest con for me is just the, like there are a fair few little minor damaged pieces. So like just some bent tabs and maybe a little bit of bent corners. Um, like I think overall the image looks great and isn't too affected by them. I think I can, from here, I can see probably a couple, like I can definitely see this little tab here is a bit bent up, but I think, you know, if I use a bit of glue and press the layers together, that'd probably fix that problem. Um, and it's more noticeable, like I said before, when you run your hands over it, you tend to feel any bits that stick up more than you can see them. Um, so it isn't a big problem for me. Obviously I would love a pristine, perfect puzzle, but I sort of understand that. Unfortunately, I think depending on how puzzles are manufactured and during the manufacturing and like boxing process pieces, unfortunately can get damaged. Um, I guess it seems to happen more in some puzzle brands than others. Um, but you know, even with my art and fable puzzle, I definitely still had uh, like similar minor damage to this one. So, you know, I think it can really happen across a lot of different types of puzzles out there. Um, so yeah, so I don't know, maybe it's something the company can look at to see if they can reduce the amount of it, but, um, but still overall, I am very happy with this puzzle and really enjoyed doing it. And I think if you like this design, I would totally recommend it. It's really fun and yeah, really enjoyable. So uh, I think in a sec, we will switch over to doing one of the 500 piece ones. And just like this, we'll do a quick unboxing and look at the pieces and then of course get into puzzling. So for the 500 piece puzzle, the one I've chosen is the cool as a cucumber puzzle, which is probably no surprise um, since I said this is, I think my favorite one out of the six puzzles. I just really think it's such a fun and like hilarious image and very kitsch. And I love the colors, like color palette. It's like so pretty and pastel. Love this sort of like baby pink and this sort of beautiful sea green, uh, like of the margarita swimming pools. And yeah, it's just got really fun details like the little diving board and the headphones and things like that. So yeah, I think it's gonna be really fun to put together. Um, so let's quickly look at packaging and unbox it. Uh, I'm assuming I don't need scissors if it's like the other one. And yeah, so just like the 1000 piece, the box is very like sturdy, a nice sort of chunky square shape. So it look pretty cool on your, you know, uh, put in a row on your uh, bookshelf or something or displayed like this. 
and yeah, and it has a lovely soft touch silicon feel. Um, and so just like the 1000 piece, I'm pretty sure all the info is like pretty much in the same places and the same type of info. So the front has the whole image, the name of the puzzle and the logo and piece count. Uh, this side just has Pezzle, the logo, and then the two sides are the same and they just have uh, the piece count, the name of the puzzle and the logo again. And then the boring side has the barcode, a bit of like warning info, has the puzzle name, and then uh, just like the other one has the size, which actually says it's 22 by 17 inches. So I'll pop the centimeters equivalent on the screen and designed in San Francisco, manufactured in China. And then on the back, it's just like the other puzzle as well. Got the whole image again, the photographer, their little like blurb or slogan, their sort of socials and their logo. So let's open this up. And the box lid is just the same, the white sort of paper on the inside. And we've just got this lovely sort of hot pink fuchsia uh, blank sides around the sort of this part of the box. And then it looks like we have another very luxurious filling, very extra poster. So it's got that lovely soft touch again. And yeah, this one, it's not quite as big as the other poster, but um, it's definitely big enough. And you know, especially since this is only a 500 piece, it makes sense if it's a little bit smaller. And obviously it's definitely, you know, bigger, a lot bigger than what's on the box. So yeah, nice, cute little, I don't know, a bit bigger than A4, or maybe it's A4 size. Um, but yeah, but yeah, I really like the feel of that. But yeah, glad that's included. You can see stuff really clearly, so fantastic. And yeah, just like the other one, uh, the pieces come in this lovely sort of thick white canvas bag with the logo and the zipper. And the box is just plain and white on the inside. So let's open it up and check out the pieces. All right. Okay, so just like the other one, it doesn't seem like there's too much puzzle dust. The inside of the bag is really clean, so that's great. And okay, so I noticed uh, one, I guess, major difference is the pieces are bigger in size than the 1000 piece, which is pretty normal. A lot of companies do that, like Gallison and um, yeah, lots of companies do that where they're, they make the 500 piece puzzle pieces just bigger because uh, for whatever reason, uh, yeah. But so that's not at all unexpected. And yeah, um, they also have that lovely uh, soft touch silicon feel on top and have the white paper on the back. Um, yeah. So there's a few that are sort of stuck together, like they've been cut, but they're sort of still a little bit attached, but they just come undone really easily, it seems. Although I have, yeah, this one here, the tab is split a little bit. So I'll probably have to like glue that one down. So it definitely seems like there might be a few. Oh yeah, and even here I can see this one again, the top is lifting off the cardboard layer a bit. So it definitely seems like it might be suffering from some of the same sort of damage issues as the 1000 piece. So that's something I'll just keep an eye on and um, have to look out for. Um, but yeah, in terms of piece shape, again, just like 1000 piece, it seems to be, um, have like the traditional cuts. So let me pull out a few. So yeah, we've got our two points, our three points, one point or tab, I should say. I, I don't know, I've switched from tabs to points now, apparently. Um, oh, yep, there's one with like four, and there's probably a like one with all the inverted bits as well, if I can find it. Ah, ah, okay, I can't find it, the pressure's too much. Um, anyway, I'm sure there probably is one in here. Oh, there's one, there we go. So yeah, it's the same um, style as the other one very traditional piece cut, but still like variation in shape. So again, hopefully that means we won't have to worry too much about false fits or anything like that. Um, and then I guess if we look at one of the pieces, so like I said, the back 
has that white paper, which again, I'm not a huge fan of, but it uh, didn't seem to be too much of a problem in the 1000 piece. Um, the damage seemed to be more about just the tabs being bent rather than the paper. I think there was a little bit of, maybe some of the pieces in the 1000 had a bit of crinkling on the white, but that was about it. Um, but this one looks fairly good. And then the thickness, I think the thickness is the same as the 1000 piece. I might have to check that later. Um, and it looks, yeah, it looks pretty much the same as the other one and feels pretty strong. Like it's sort of a medium thickness and it feels pretty strong and sturdy. When I try and bend this one gently, it doesn't really bend, but I'm sure well, I know that the tabs can bend because we've seen that damage before, um, but yeah, it feels pretty good. And then of course the top has that lovely um, soft touch silicon feel. And again, like the 1000 piece, it is completely matte. There is no sheen. So I'm really happy about that. And yeah, just love the feel of it. It looks really nice. And the colors seem to match and look very like crisp and bright and very clear. The printing looks really good. Yeah, so can definitely see all the details on the pieces. Um, yeah, so definitely pleased about that. Um, so I'm hoping that the experience of this one will be pretty similar or the same as the 1000 piece. Um, so in terms of, uh, I guess, putting this one together, let's talk strategy now before I forget. Um, it's gonna be, I think, pretty much similar to how I did the other one. Um, there's probably enough variation to do the border first. So I think I'm going to probably try and do that. I mean, this is only a 500 piece, so it's not that big and we don't have so much space to cover, I guess. But um, so I think we can probably put the border together first pretty easily. And then I might pull out like really distinct things like maybe the cucumbers and like the little pineapple and the floaties, like they should stand out pretty easily. And then, yeah, and then maybe I'll do the limes and the margaritas and probably leave the pink background till last. I think that might be the trickiest. I'm thinking the margaritas will be a little tricky as well. Um, but you know, I don't, hopefully this puzzle will be pretty fun to do and won't take too long. Um, but I'm not that worried about time. It's more as long as I enjoy the puzzle. I think that's what is, you know, the most important when puzzling, you know, are you enjoying it? So um, I think let's, get into puzzling this one. So I have finished this super cute and fun cool as a cucumber puzzle. And yeah, I really love how it looks. I think it's such a cool, quirky, whimsical image. It's, it's pretty ridiculous, but yeah, I really love it. Um, it's also really pretty. I love these like pastel colors. They're just, yeah, really nice. Um, and I, in general, I had a pretty good experience piecing this together. 
but there were some issues, but I'll get to those in a sec. Um, as for time, it took uh, one hour and 50 minutes, so a bit under two hours from sorting to endpoint. Um, there were definitely like areas of the puzzle that I think contributed to taking a bit longer. So definitely like this solid pink and uh, even like the edges of the glasses were a bit tricky. And yeah, the margarita sort of teal gradients were a little bit tricky as well. But nothing was like really difficult and nothing was like super challenging or frustrating. It all sort of came together in the end. Just, you know, obviously some areas are easier than others. Um, so in terms of quality, um, the pros kind of match that of the 1000 piece. So we've got the beautiful, uh, you know, soft touch uh, silicon uh, surface, which I really love. And because of that, the puzzle is like completely matte. There's like no glare or sheen, which was really helpful actually with this puzzle because it meant that like any little color changes were really easy to see. So yeah, definitely um, really liked that feature. And then in terms of fit, it was a bit mixed. So I love that the pieces stay together really well. So I could pick up sections and yeah, I think you could do a puzzle pickup pretty easily. Um, yeah, so I was able to definitely build and move sections around quite well. So quite pleased with that. But I also had some false fits. Um, so the only area that I seemed to really have false fits was this sort of top edge here. Um, I had to like undo it a couple times and then eventually just like leave it off and then fill in the rest of this pink and then sort of match it up. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I've, it's not the first puzzle I've had that issue with. Like even a Gibson's one, I had that issue where the edge sort of had some false fits and um, yeah, I've, I've felt like I've had that happen with a few puzzles. So it doesn't seem to be unique to this. Maybe there's limited edge piece shapes out there or something. I don't know. But yeah, that was a, a little bit annoying, but I figured it out in the end and it looks correct now. Um, I'm pretty sure it is. So yeah, so that was a bit weird, um, but there weren't any other false fits. So happy about the rest of it. And then uh, puzzle dust. Uh, yeah, not a problem at all. It's pretty much non-existent. Um, it was a bit on my hands um, and a bit in the box, but yeah, no, no issues. I didn't sneeze or anything. And the puzzle board is really clean. And then, yeah, the thing I guess that is the biggest con is uh, like the 1000 piece, there's definitely some minor damage in that you probably saw in some of the footage, uh, like you can see some tabs sticking up where basically the layers of cardboard on that tab have like, like I guess, uh, frayed or like spread apart. So I think they'd be pretty easily fixed though. Like if I just glued them together and then put like a heavy book on them or something that would like lie flat again and be held together. So I think they're definitely fixable, but of course, you know, it's still a bit annoying that you end up with a few of them uh, in the puzzle. For the most part, I can't actually see the others. It's that one particularly sticks up though. Um, oh, that one a little bit, but yeah, for the most part, it's more I can feel a few areas like corners or tabs that are a little bit uh, raised or frayed. So yeah, I feel like there were a few more in this one than the 1000 piece for whatever reason. I don't know, maybe it's just how it was made or something like that. Um, but there was another issue with this, which I thought was interesting. Um, so I can especially see it on the cucumbers because they're dark. So I don't know if it's only on those areas or if it is occurring in other places, but I can't see it. But basically what I think has happened is you can sort of see almost like a whitish border around some of the pieces. And I think it's where like the laminate or top coat on the puzzle. So maybe it's whatever this soft silicon, soft touch thing is, um, is sort of like either coming off a bit or hasn't been completely sealed. Like it still feels, looks flat on the piece, but it's sort of, yeah, like it almost hasn't been properly sealed or something around some of the edges. Um, and interestingly, I noticed this on a couple pieces in another puzzle brand, which is the Water and Wines puzzle, which also has this soft touch or velvet touch. Um, and they're made by different manufacturers because one's made in Poland and one's made in China. So maybe it has something to do with this, this type of surface that maybe it's more prone to having some of the edges come up a bit or something. Um, it's, it, to be honest though, it feels completely flat. It's more you can just see it. 
so yeah I thought that was weird um, a bit interesting I mean obviously I'd prefer if my puzzle didn't have that because it's a little bit it's not the end of the world but it's a little bit distracting like you'd, you'd I'd prefer to see not see it because then the cucumbers would look nicer but yeah so just I guess something to be aware of um, I didn't notice this at all in the 1000 piece just this one so yeah I don't know um, but maybe something that the company Pezzle can kind of uh, keep an eye out for with future puzzle releases um, yeah so uh, overall though I think I still had a very positive time doing this puzzle despite the issues it had um, yeah I still think like the artworks fabulous and I still just love the fit and feel of the puzzle pieces um, so I still feel like yeah it's a still a positive experience but there are some things that could be a bit bothersome um, but I'd still yeah happily recommend this puzzle in general I think to like you know uh, different age groups and you know also different skill levels I think it could be really fun for a, a whole lot of different people um, so that's the end of this one but in a sec I think we will just sort of sum everything up and you know have a quick chat about Pezzel as a company in whole all right so let's have a final chat about the two puzzles that are completed and the brand as a whole um, so yeah my experience overall was very positive I really enjoyed this brand I just think it looks super awesome and it's quite unique to my collection I love the bright colors I love the photography or the imagery and as far as I know it's actually exclusive to them they worked with the photographer to come up with these uh, amazing images um, so yeah really impressed with like you know how the brand sort of presents itself um, and yeah I also love the sort of uh, quality of the packaging it's very uh, luxurious especially the soft touch and you know it's just it looks like it's made really well uh, feels like very strong and sturdy and well you know also is designed really nicely like the puzzles are very good looking they look aesthetically pleasing so they, I think it would look really cool like in any collection like especially on a displayed on a bookshelf or something like that um, so yeah in terms of how I found puzzling these two um, my overall experience was positive so like I love the images and packaging and everything and I found the piece quality for the most part was good so uh, you know there were a lot of positives and I feel like the pieces were very luxurious and in general had a very nice feel and fit and I love that they were matte and no glare and love that there was like no puzzle dust so yeah I think there were some really good positive points about it um, but both also had some you know some issues I feel like the issues for the 1000 piece one were very minor it was just a few little bent pieces here and there which I've seen in other puzzle brands too of at different price points um, but I also feel like I can fix that myself um, you know of course any puzzle that you get with some damaged pieces can be a little bit frustrating or disappointing but it does happen it's just the realities of puzzles unfortunately um, but I think for the most part you know it wasn't too much of a problem it didn't bother me too much and so yeah the for the 1000 piece the positives definitely outweigh the cons um, but I feel like the cons in the one uh, the 500 piece one are a little bit more prominent so it shared all the good points that the 1000 piece had but its cons were or its quality was a little bit more of a problem so uh, the minor damage there was probably a little bit more of it or it was a little bit more obvious so some of the bent tabs tended to stick up a bit more um, it's still something that I could definitely fix myself with just a bit of glue but um, at a glance I can still see some of the damaged pieces whereas when I look at uh, the 1000 piece one it's definitely not that obvious so sometimes I can't even notice it unless I run my hand over it but yeah I can definitely see a couple spots on the 500 piece one where I'm like okay definitely need to glue those down um, but yeah the other thing that there was an issue with was yeah there were a few pieces on the cucumber areas that looked like they sort of had like white around the edge and yeah it just looked like maybe there'd been some issues with, with the coating process or lamination process I don't really know um, be interested to find out why that has occurred and like I said it was something that I saw in another puzzle which has the same sort of soft silicon touch finish so I suspect it's something to do with that type of coating 
Um, so let's talk price. Um, so these are a high end price um, on the website, which also let me see Australian dollars. Um, the 1000 pieces, are 58 Australian dollars and 44 USD. I'll also pop this on the screen. And the 500 pieces are 44 Australian dollars or 32 uh, US dollars. Um, they also did have like a, some bundle deals. And one of the bundles was you could get the two 500 pieces together um, so instead of paying, what, $44 each or $32 USD each, you could get the two together for the price of one of the 1,000 pieces. So you do save a bit of money if you go down that way. Um, so, yeah, would I recommend these for that price? Because it is a pretty, you know, luxe high-end price. Um, I feel like the 1,000 piece, yes, I think it kind of lives up to that price. And despite the little bit of damage, um, I think you know, that's not too bothersome. And I think overall, it's still a really fantastic experience, you know, gorgeous images and, you know, fantastic, like quality, like as a whole and yeah, just a really luxurious experience. So I feel like, yeah, the 1000 piece is definitely like, you know, uh, worthwhile at that high end price point. Um, but I do feel like you know, the price should probably be brought down a little bit for these 500 piece ones because I feel like that uh, high end price can't quite be justified for the sort of like, you know, uh, quality and issues that are in this one. Like, I just think it's a little bit uh, more prominent and that, you know, for that high price point, it's probably not as worthwhile, unfortunately. Um, but that being said, I feel like if you got the two 500 ones together for that discounted price. I feel like it's more worthwhile at that price point. So, you know, I think it's really up to you as the puzzler to sort of figure out how much of a deal breaker that sort of like uh, those quality issues are, whether it bothers you or not. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, definitely recommend the 1000 piece one, but I'm yeah a little bit conflicted and about the 500 piece one. I really do love it, but I feel like it's just not worth the full price but you know I think I would pay the discounted price to get it so yeah and that's obviously just based on my experience of doing these two I am going to assume that these other ones are going to have similar issues that or issues and positives I guess that these two had. Hello so it's editing Juba here uh, since filming the video I've actually been chatting with Taylor who's the owner of Pezzle Puzzles and she is really lovely and friendly and also really like open to receiving uh, information and feedback about the puzzles especially like some of the sort of uh, like quality or damage issues that have occurred. Um, she told me that she's actually uh, already aware of some of them because she's also been like communicating with some of the other puzzles out there who are also uh, like trying out the launch collection which she sent them. Um, and what else? She told me that for this initial launch collection, they just made a really small run of the puzzles, um, mainly so that she could kind of tweak anything that needs tweaking and yeah, address any issues that arose. So uh, yeah, she said at the moment that she's actually been passing along the feedback to her manufacturer who she's gonna be working with to yeah, see what they can do to improve the puzzles and make a even better product for essentially round two of the puzzles in the future. So yeah, I just thought I'd let you know that. Um, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, definitely happy to know that, uh, yeah, she's taking on feedback and yeah, really wants to make a really good quality and even more awesome product in the future. So I guess in the comments below, let me know what you thought of both of these puzzles and the brand. Do you, do you love the images? Are they your sort of thing? Or, you know, do you prefer more traditional, um, I don't know, less fun, silly images? Um, and, you know, let me know what you thought of the quality. Like, do you like this sort of soft touch? Have you done it before? Um, do you think the issues like in the 500 piece one would bother you? Yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure you show that like button some love. 
And if you want to see more videos like this and for even more puzzle content, then don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. By subscribing, not only will you be the first to know when a new video is released, but you're also helping this channel grow. And you can also find me over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore where you'll find even more puzzle content. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.